Hey doc, I've got a calf that's breathing really loud. What could be wrong? That's an excellent question, Generic Rancher Ron. And there's a lot of different causes for a calf to breathe loud. However, the one I'd like to focus on today is diphtheria. Now diphtheria, which is technically known as necrotic laryngitis, is caused by a bacteria known as Fusobacterium necrophorum. This is the same bacteria that causes the problems with foot rot, causes the problems with liver abscesses that we see in cattle at different stages of the development cycle. Now, in particular with this diphtheria calf, why we seem to hear this calf breathing loud is because of how the disease starts. The disease starts when the larynx, which is the part in the back of the throat where the trachea meets up with the mouth, basically, is infected. It gets scratched by something, either a strong piece of hay or maybe some dust. The calf's been swallowing a lot of dust. We don't know for sure. However, that Fusobacterium necrophorum settles in that little scratch there on the larynx and sets up infection. Now, with infection comes swelling. So think of it this way. If the larynx is sitting like this and the air is supposed to move through, it's all hunky-dory if the larynx is the normal size. However, if it starts swelling up, that starts to close off the passageway and it gets harder for the calf to breathe. So the calf has to push air in and out harder, which of course makes things louder. And this action of pushing air in and out irritates the larynx more, which causes it to swell more and shut down more. It's a pretty vicious cycle. Now this narrowed passageway because of all the swelling is what causes us to be able to hear this calf breathing so loud. We can hear it breathe from several feet or several yards away. Because of this, we need to work on not just getting the infection taken care of, but getting the swelling down. Without getting the swelling down, the calf isn't going to breathe normally. So if we're gonna treat this, we need to make sure we treat with not just an antibiotic, but as well as treating with an anti-inflammatory. Now. For cases that are a little more mild, you might be able to get away with something like a tetracycline antibiotic. Um, names would be Oxytet 200, LA 200, Liquamycin 200, so on and so forth. And then also give dexamethasone. That dexamethasone can be given at a rate of uh, 10 cc's per calf it's a, if it's a feeder calf. Be careful though if this is an adult cow that may be bred as dexamethasone can cause the cow to slip her calf. Now for more complicated cases, I like to use a different combination. Probably an antibiotic that's a little bit more potent would be a good start on the antibiotic end. A lot of times I'll use things like Nuflor or Draxin, but many in the same classes that work quite well, or same type as that work quite well. There are in different classes. Now on the anti-inflammatory end, I may not just use dexamethasone, but IV the calf with sodium iodide. This is the same stuff we use to IV a cow that's got a wooden tongue or a lump jaw. And this combination seems to work better on calves that have a more pronounced problem with necrotic laryngitis. Now, if all else fails, there is a salvage procedure that can be done, which is a tracheostomy. Basically, a hole is cut in the trachea, which would then be below the larynx, so we get away from all that swelling, and then a little stoma is placed in there. This allows the calf to breathe in and out without having to breathe past that swelling. This is really something that I would only do if we had a calf that had not responded well to treatment and we were looking to take it to slaughter. I really wouldn't think this would be a great option for a cow permanently as with that stoma right there, it's very difficult for them to go swimming. I think you can fill in the gaps as to why. So if you have any other questions about necrotic laryngitis, feel free to reach out to one of our veterinarians at Sioux Nation Ag Center. We're here to help with any animal health situation you might have so that you can restore those animals' health and feed that bottom line. Now folks, with the fall coming on and the calves getting weaned, there's a lot of questions we'll get about different animal diseases. If you have a question, feel free to leave it in the comments below if you're on the Facebook or to send us a message. 
We'll be happy to help you answer those questions either in person or we might even make a video out of it if Generic Rancher Ron over here has that same question. Like and share and take care folks.